What's up, you guys? Okay, I'm about to head into the thrift store. It has been a minute since I've been, only because I have had so much stuff that I needed to list at home. It has gotten out of control. I banned myself from the thrift store until I was able to get most of it listed. I still haven't gotten all of it sorted and listed, but I would say the vast majority is listed. I'm running out of new inventory. I want new inventory to list. I want to feel excited again. And I really think thrifting is a way to like get some of that momentum back when you've been in a little bit of a thrifting slump or a listing slump. So I'm getting back to it today and I want you guys to join me. So let's see what I can find. Perfect. These printers are actually worth some good money, but I really hate testing printers. So instead I found these toners, brand new in the box. They are only $5, but they sell for around $80 each. And toner is always a win, especially if it is OEM or just original to the brand. After that, I headed over to the shoe section and I found these Nayot clogs or slip-on shoes. I sold this brand before, it sold for around $35. So. These clogs seem to have a pretty good resale value and I'm happy to pick them up. Next was a Norma Kamali New Without Tags shirt dress with a tie waist and this brand is hit or miss for me but I figured since it's New Without Tags and in good condition I might as well pick it up. I don't know if this is an accurate comp. I honestly expect to sell it for around $35. Cory America is a boutique brand. It's really soft, really cute, and I don't expect to get much for it, but 20 bucks for an easy quick flip is great with me. I always look in the scrub section now because I'm looking for figs. Fig scrubs sell great. I actually have sold a set of scrubs before from figs with like stains on it for $40. So you can imagine how much they go for even just tops and bottoms separate. Crazy money. So again, even if you find just the top or just the bottom, whatever color, whatever pattern, I would absolutely pick up figs. It was a very fast sell for me, even damaged. This was a moth anthropology small cardigan, but uh, I had a lot of wear. The fit was just kind of different. I just didn't think it would sell for very much money, so I did pass. But despite the grainy camera, this was actually in really good condition. This Meadow Rue anthropology laser cut cardigan, open front, really, really cute. I thought it could sell for at least $25 plus shipping, so I grabbed it. Next up is an Angel of the North Anthropology top with like a built-in blouse bottom, had some laser cuts as well, navy blue. This camera is really grainy with anything dark, but I thought it would sell for around $25, so I picked it up. Same with Guinevere. This is an anthropology brand. I thought I could sell it for around $25. That's about what I get for cardigans from anthropology that are like this. Anthropology has been a little more hit or miss for me lately, but as long as I keep my prices reasonable, I've found that it still does pretty well, especially if it's a unique pattern like this. Michael Stars is sold at Nordstrom and Nordstrom Rack. This is like an asymmetrical moto zip tweed jacket, so I grabbed it. This is an Auburn men's vintage deep pile fleece half zip. I picked it up on a hunch. I don't know how well it will do, but it seemed pretty cool, and vintage menswear like that does okay for me. Then I found this Free People cardigan. It's like a long, almost a duster cardigan with a clip front. It has a fringe hem. It's really cute, really unique. Even like it has like a bow tie back. And I thought it was really different. And Free People plus different is always a good find. Here's another Free People top. This should sell for around 20 to $25 for me. It has like that lace detail, kind of cute and different. That's about what these tops generally fetch for me. But this Geiger sweater, I found two of them together. Geiger actually just recently sold. This is like a hand-woven, boiled wool type sweater with the intricate buttons, vintage. These should each sell for around $35 to $40 for me, I'm hoping. And this is an Anthropology Meadow Rue kind of peplum lace top. It should sell for around $20 to $25 for me. Just really basic and simple but cute. This sweater coat is a Geist Vine. It is wool. It has this really unique embroidery on it. Like, it was definitely different. It stood out to me and comps looked really good, so I definitely picked it up. Couldn't believe I found this new with tags Mizook. I think it retailed for something around $200 originally, so totally crazy to find that. It sells great for me usually. 
and then free people this is a really unique tag I don't think I've seen that before this is like a brocade blazer cropped really really cute and unique this 11z's coat is anthropology and it found it was worn on the heart of Dixie TV show but it was missing a button so I debated about picking it up but then I eventually did okay today was okay I wouldn't say it was anything great um, now I'm getting myself some lunch I have mentioned in past videos that I get lunch based on how well I did and even though I don't deserve it I'm getting chick-fil-a <laughs> chick-fil-a is like my favorite lunch so whatever I think it was decent today um, I could go to another thrift store but I think I'm gonna stop for now and try to get as much listed as I can um, before the kids get home so I'm gonna try to get caught up on that and I will update you guys all right, you guys, I'm back in my office. I've just hung up all of my recent finds. Um, this is that Angel of the North shirt, the Meadow Rue cardigan, you know, all those things that I pointed out to you guys. The one downside is this is an amazing Geisvine coat, right? It has that embroidery that I showed you. The only issue is... I, I don't see any buttons on this side. It's almost as if the buttons never existed. So it has the slots for buttons. I don't know. So I might, um, I'll just have to just close that. Maybe it can be a project for someone because it is still really cool and comps are still really good for something like this. So not too bad. Um, that Mizook and this is actually a Dolce and Gabbana long sleeve that I just need to iron or steam just to get it nice and crisp to list. And then, do you guys remember this jacket? This 11Z's anthropology jacket, it was missing a button. You guys will not believe my luck. I looked in the pocket as I got home because I made the decision to buy it anyway, even though it was missing a button. In the pocket is that missing button. I am going to use my sewing kit to sew it back on and we should be good as new. Okay, now I'm back in my office. I've actually just listed all the things that I got at the thrift store, and now I'm gonna put them away into one of my bins. And all I did, I picked up a bin that looked pretty empty or had plenty of space in it, and now I'm just gonna go back through my eBay store listings that I've already done and just type in the bin number for the SKU, and that's all I'm gonna do. So I'll kind of show you how I do that real quick. And then everything I listed is just right next to me, so I'm gonna kind of dip down, and as I find it like this Angel of the North, sweater that I thrifted. So I typed in Angel of the North in my eBay listing search. I'm gonna search for that and it'll pull up this exact sweater. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and put in the custom label C7 because that's my bin number. And now I can just place this in my bin, fold it nicely or not fold it nicely and put it in the bin and move on to the next one. This is that new with tags exclu exclusively Mizook cardigan. So I'm going to go ahead and look that up. And there it is. C7. And as you can see, it is updated now. So I'm going to fold it again and put it right in my bin. And this only takes a few minutes as long as I do it right away when I wait a long time and I have like a giant mountain of stuff to sort through, it seems a lot more intimidating. And you guys might also notice here that my active listings are way down and they're actually gonna go down even more because I'm planning on going through just old stale inventory and putting, putting them in a thread up cleanup bag and sending them to thread up and seeing how they do there. Um, I'm really looking to kind of purge out a lot of my older stuff and refresh it with some new items in the next week or so. So hopefully I'm able to get to that. This is that Free People blazer. So I'm going to go ahead and put, I'm going to put Free People crop. Yeah, here it is. Crop black, cropped jacket. It's frustrating because it looks like I still have some item specifics to add and I don't know why, so I'm still working on that. I have fixed a lot of my item specifics, but I've done it using the eBay, like right here, the download and upload feature. I don't know. I don't know why this new one I listed is still showing up as missing. I think I need to edit some templates that I'm using. This is that Meadow Rue lace peplum sweater. And while I'm at it, I also see 
the other one that I can add. I know I can also add these as I'm going and like as I'm listing, but often I'm like I'm in the zone when I'm listing and I'm just going one after the other really fast. So this almost to bulk put away like this is just almost easier for me because I know the bin, I know what I'm putting away. I don't know, it just seems to be a little bit faster for me. I don't think I necessarily save time if I try to do it while I'm listing. But if you guys have a different way that you do it and that works for you, that's so awesome. Like I just, I'm thinking for me. I have gotten a lot of questions about why I don't weigh my items beforehand. And that's because my templates have shipping templates assigned to them. So if something is a top, I have my shipping set at $5 because usually first class shipping isn't any more than that. If it's like a lighter weight item, $5 about covers it. If something is a sweater, sometimes it's a first class package, sometimes it's a padded flat rate. So I have that set at $6 um, just to kind of meet in the middle of, you know, half and half. Jeans I also have at $6 because again, most of the time it's either first class or padded flat rate and I like to go right in between that. At $6 it seems pretty fair. Bags and jackets though, I push up to $10 just because those are tend to be bigger and they tend to be more expensive to ship. And shoes as well are at $10 shipping. And again, those are just usually bigger, bulkier, a little bit harder to ship. And so I add on for that. And that's what I do. Then I don't have to weigh everything beforehand. I feel like that would kind of clog up my system of just going as quickly as I can. But again, everyone does it different. Maybe I'll switch at one point and way ahead of time. I'm sure it would make shipping a lot easier. But for now, this seems to be working for me. Shipping doesn't take me very long anyway with my system. And I do have videos all about how I do my shipping. If you guys wanna check out a video link, I'll put at the top here. But yeah, this is that Cory America romper. Done. Anything that's like really bulky or too big for a bin, I will just hang up. And then I don't leave any custom label. I just leave it blank because I know already that if it's big and bulky and there's no custom label, that means I'm hanging it up. And I don't have a giant closet here. It's pretty small. So it's usually fairly easy to find in that closet if I know it's hanging. And then there's the free people cardigan. And I'm all done. Okay, and along with a couple other things that I already did put away, I just showed most of the items that I got. I'm gonna really try to get into this rhythm as my kids are in school and as I have time to go thrifting and take you guys along, I can find things, bring them home, list them as quickly as I can, put them away as you guys saw here, it just took a few minutes and then I'm all done. I know as I'm consistent with this, I will see huge sales in my store because when I'm really consistent with listing, that's when I get the best sales. And that's always, in my opinion, going to be the most efficient and best way to boost your store is to just list more items, list as many as you can. All right, you guys, that does it for me. Thank you so much for tuning in. Please don't forget to like this video and subscribe to my channel for more information on how I run my reselling business on eBay and Amazon. I appreciate all of you. Take care and I will catch you next time.